This is the most powerful X3D processor yet. It sports the full power of the 9950X with the gaming prowess of a 9800X3D. And it is a true do-it-all CPU. Welcome to Machines and More. Today we're talking about a new CPU that AMD is launching. This one is the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D and you can get it starting tomorrow. In this review, I'll talk through some highlights of the chip. I'll talk through the typical operating behavior and discuss performance. We'll compare against similar products that you may be also considering. And then we'll make a recommendation to see if this is the right CPU for you. In short though, if what you are looking for is the best productivity CPU with the best gaming CPU all in one for a high end, no compromise build, this is the one. I did want to thank AMD for supplying a review kit so I could review this one properly ahead of the launch. As with all reviews on the channel, they are not paid for by the manufacturers. AMD is not sponsoring this video and you can always expect a fair, objective, and well-tested and well-researched review. If you enjoy content like this, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. Big thanks. The 9950X3D is a 16-core and 32-thread CPU, 8 cores on 2 chiplets, and one of those chiplets has AMD's 3D vertical cache stacked underneath it. The extra 64 megabytes of cache brings the total cache for the CPU to 144 megabytes. So it's like a 9950X, same chiplet and core setup with the 3D V cache of the 9800X 3D. Now the position of the cache die is the big change that we saw with the 9800X 3D. Instead of putting the cache die on top, like it was with previous generations, it is now positioned underneath the CCDs and that allows the CCDs to have more direct access to the integrated heat spreader, which is what your cooler touches. So the cooling is better there. Uh, core thermals will that now be less of a concern with this new arrangement. Uh, because of that, AMD went ahead and spec the full 170 watt TDP of the 9950X, which means that there's relatively little compromise here with productivity workloads. In essence, it is a 9950X. In fact, you'll see it's a pretty good one also. It's 7000 series corollary was the 7950X 3D and that CPU had a relatively lower TDP versus the 7950X. It was spec'd at 120 watts TDP and drew that much. Unlike a typical Ryzen 120 watt TDP uh, processor, which would typically draw more around 162 watts. So 170 watts TDP is a big change and there's going to be a big performance boost versus how this would have been had it come with a significant power limit. The competitive landscape for this level of CPU looks like this now at the time of the launch. Go ahead and ignore the 7950X 3D. The retail pricing is totally out of whack on that one. So the 9950X 3D will launch at 699 and unlike the GPU market right now, I actually expect you to be able to get one at 699 fairly readily um, on Wednesday. Nonetheless, that is going to make it the most expensive consumer CPU now. It's gonna be above the Intel Core Ultra 285K, which you shouldn't get, and ahead of the 9950X, which has dropped in price since the initial launch price of 600. The 9900X 3D is also being launched at the same time. I haven't tested that CPU yet. I may get to it in the future, but that is being launched at $100 less or 600 US. The 9950X 3D is spec'd with a max boost clock of 5.7 GHz, which you'll usually see only during lighter loads. Here for a heavy all-core load like you might be using the CPU for, I saw one CCD boosting up to about 5.1 GHz and the other about 4.9 GHz. As a whole, this is a little bit faster than the 9950X is, and that should be the contributing factor to some of the productivity benchmarks that you'll see shortly. Power behavior is similar, drawing down around 200 watts during this process. As you can see, the 7950X really was not given the full 170 watt TDP treatment due to the 3DV cache being placed on top, which made its cooling more ineffective. So at a minimum, you will want a 240 millimeter liquid cooling solution or a quality air cooler. Here I'm testing with a Nocto D15 G2 and that is absolutely sufficient to cool it for an intense workload. The CPU has a stock max temp of 95 degrees Celsius and at these temps you're seeing here, you usually won't have any issues getting the best boost clocks. This is gonna be silicon dependent and perhaps a more detailed analysis of the PBO behavior will be better suited to a standalone video, but I did want to give you a little bit of a snippet here 
showing you the impact of setting a minus 15 curve all core offset all, along with lifting the max boost ceiling 200 megahertz. Now, this is going to be the more dependable way to overclock the CPU. Some chips may be able to run a heavier offset. Some may even struggle to hold this, but this is just a general idea here for reference. CCD2 does boost up a lot more. Thermals are, of course, higher given the additional power drawn down, and there is a little additional all-core performance you can net this way. So I saw 3.7% in Cinebench, and those gains actually don't translate well to gaming performance, unfortunately. In a lighter or single-core workload, you will see the clocks hit close to the 5.7 max boost spec. Here for Cinebench single core, I saw the clocks a little bit higher than the 9950X, so that's a good sign as well, with a slightly lower power draw, in fact. Along with the CPUs, AMD is releasing a new chipset driver update. The first highlight is a little bit less applicable to the general user. The provisioning packages service update will check the system at every boot, and if you've changed processors, it'll apply the correct provisioning packages, which is especially important for scenarios where you're you know, doing an in-socket upgrade from single CCD rising to dual CCD. Um, the correct provisioning packages are very important for gaming on dual chiplet Ryzen, since the OS will have to park the cores that aren't on the CCD that's being used for gaming. And you can see here, the provisioning package is correctly applied since we don't see much activity on the CCD that does not have the cache. The other change is relevant for dual chiplet X3D Ryzen. The 3D V cache performance optimizer helps the OS favor the cores that are connected to the vertical cache during gaming, which makes a lot of sense. And in non-gaming scenarios, the OS will pick the cores that have the highest frequency, which may or may not be the one uh, that has the V cache. And this here is just a minor update for the package to work properly in Windows 10 when VBS is enabled. With my particular example, I actually noticed that the lower clock CCD2 during non-gaming workloads was actually the one with the vCache, and thereby, thereby that was the one that was delegated for gaming. With the 9950X I tested, the faster CCD was the same, the, uh, same one that ended up being assigned general gaming duties. So for ease of comparison here, I'm just calling the CCD used for gaming CCD2 to match even though for the 9950X, it was actually the first one that was used uh, for gaming. But uh, here for 1080 High Far Cry 6, I saw boost clocks hit around 5.45 gigahertz. This is that stock auto PBO and gaming power draw in this title was around 100 watts. So same as the 9950X. The Vcache performance optimizer update doesn't really do anything for single CCD X3D chips, which are still going to be simpler for the OS to manage since it's just going to be six or eight cores on a single chiplet. Lastly, on the chipset updates front is the AMD application compatibility database. At a high level, this is how AMD is handling specific game titles that the provisioning packages can't fully address. And I did note that a lot of these are considered to be more poorly optimized titles. So if you do game one of these titles uh, specifically on Ryzen 7000 or 9000 or Ryzen 9 chips, uh, some help is going to be on the way. So that's specifically Ryzen 9 though. Let's go ahead and take a look at some performance benchmarks. The main non-AMD competition is still going to be Intel's 285K. You can still get the previous gen 14900K as well. Both are in that top tier designation. Uh, we have the 7950X 3D and 7950X, and at least for the productivity benchmarks, I'll have the 9900X and 265K as well. So let's start with some benchmark tests. Cinebench, the 9950X 3D is the strongest, about a 4% bump over the 9950X and almost 22% over the 7950X 3D. As mentioned with the minus 15 curve offset, I saw a small bump over the stock 9950X 3D. It does come at an additional 16 watts of power draw, and to some, that may be worth it. For single core, the 9950X 3D is very strong. This trail CPU is like the 285K, although it is such a minor gap that even if your workloads are primarily single core heavy, I still don't think it's worth choosing the 285K just for that reason. Geekbench 6, 9950X 3D leads the way. Final synthetic here is Time Spy. This is memory latency sensitive, so the Intel CPUs do a little bit better in that regard. Real world applications, Blender. This is a very strong performance for the 9950X 3D. Based on this, we're seeing the 9950X 3D complete 
6.4% more samples than the 9950X, and that translates to a significantly lower render time. I did want to take a quick look using this data at uh, energy consumption for completing the Blender render. The 7950X really with its low TDP, it's actually dialed into an efficiency sweet spot versus the Ryzen 7000 equivalents. All the efficiency in the world won't help you though if you're up against the clock. So that's where the 9950X 3D comes in, right? It is the fastest and still very efficient and this is all good stuff. So if you do CPU-based rendering, especially in Blender, the 9950X 3D is going to be a solid choice. Although I still think the 9950X is perfectly fine here as well. Handbrake, this is a video encoding test. 9950X 3D is well ahead of the pack here and it is very competitive with both H.264 and 265. Puget Mensch DaVinci Resolve benchmark. The 9950X 3D does come up a little bit slower here. This is a video editing benchmark. The top ones here are all, all spaced in very tight because the GPU does kind of have a part to play in this test and that's why you see that. 7-zip 9950X 3D is very, very strong. I did notice that the Ryzen 9000 chips tend to have not so strong decompressed scores here though. Getting into gaming, this may be the last round of testing that I do with the 4080 Super as I am phasing in 50 series here. You know, it's not actually that big of a gap over here, but the main thing to pay attention is the 1080 numbers. And you may not be playing at 1080, which is why I've included 1440 only as a reference. Just know that as you go higher in quality settings and or resolution, you will see less of an impact from the CPU. And that's why you'll see most reviewers focus on the 1080 marks. Far Cry 6 9950X 3D actually beats out this 9800X 3D, which is very impressive. This one is a poorly optimized, generally quite CPU limited title, and you'll often fail to get full utilization out of the GPU. MSFS 2020, the 3 dv cache is very important for this title, and that's why you'll see all the X3D chips tested here at the top. I did note a lower than expected performance in 1440, and I actually tested it multiple times, so it was a little bit odd where that place was consistent every time I tested it though, so not entirely sure what's going on there. NO1800, this can be a challenging one for CPUs, especially as you get a huge developed economy and a bunch of shipping routes and stuff. It's actually really, really fun. But uh, here the 9950X 3D does remarkably well and does edge out the 9800X 3D. Assassin's Creed Mirage. In general, the performance is very good here. Although strangely, this was a title where I saw a slight bit of regression versus the 7950X 3D. Perhaps it's a little bit of run to run variance, but there's clearly no improvement here. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the 9950X 3D is great as well does top the charts here along with the 14900K. AOE 4, first off, I had instability with this title with the Core Ultra CPUs ever since launch, so they are not included here, which will mess up the geomine for those, but realistically, just looking at all these benchmarks, there's not a compelling reason to go that route regardless. But yeah, this is a scenario where I saw the non-X3D outperform the X3D ever so slightly. Then the 9950X3 does go ahead at 1440, but the frame time consistency is really good here with th that CPU. Uh, for the averages, it's really marginal and the top CPUs are all very close. Red Dead 2 can often be GPU limited. Here, definitely we see that at 1440. We do see some separation at 1080. Either way, the 9950X3 is tops and has very good consistency. Finally, Total War Three Kingdoms, older title, uh, 9950X 3D, very good performance and very good 1% and 0.1% lows, which can be a little bit more variable. As a whole, when looking at the GeoMean for 1080, the 9950X 3D does technically come in at the top. It beats the 9800X 3D by one frame uh, for what it's worth. It's basically identical, right? However, the 9950X 3D is a little bit stronger on the 0.1% lows and over the 7950X 3D here, there's about an 8% improvement on the averages. And for whatever reason, when I tested the 7950X 3D, the 0.1% lows were absolutely dismal. So this overall is a big jump up here. Uh, over the 9950X, the 3 dv cache gives about an 11% bump. And this will vary depending on what title you play, but this can be a significant difference. On the 1440 side, you'll typically see less of a difference as I mentioned before, but still I see the 9800X 3D and 9950X 3D at the top. The 9800X 3D leads by two frames on the averages, but the 9950X 3D does have strong 1% and 0.1% lows. So on the averages, they are still practically identical. Even at this resolution, the X3D part has a 5% bump over the non X3D 9950X. So there is some value added 
even if you are playing at 1440p or perhaps higher settings. So recommendations, we do have to frame the discussion properly. If you are considering the CPU, you want the best of the best. If you're just pure gaming, you know, just stick with the 9800X 3D. There's not a huge reason to go for the 9950X 3D if you're just gaming. It is much pricier and uh, unless you want the more consistent 1% and 0.1% lows, the 9800X 3D is perfectly fine there. It's clear to me from testing that the 9950X 3D is going to own everything else on the market, AMD or Intel. The fact that this is basically 9950X with the 3D V cache it has a significant implication here. With the 7950X 3D, there was still some compromise, right? It wasn't as good as the 7800X 3D for gaming, and it wasn't as good as the 7950X for productivity. With this, you're basically getting a 9800X 3D for gaming and plus a better 9950X for heavy all-core workloads. Now, there are exceptions where the 9950X 3D isn't flat out the best in the application, but generally speaking, there's no other CPU that does so well for both productivity and gaming. And if you just want a consumer socket CPU that does whatever you want, this is it. And it'll cost you though. It is $100 more than the 9950X launched at, which launched at $100 lower than the 7950X. So the $700 MSRP does also match the 7950X 3D's initial launch price. So it's not unreasonable considering that this isn't a held back 9950X. In fact, it's better. So I don't know how the pricing of the 7950X 3D will end up when the dust settles, but it would have to be fairly low for users to consider it though over the 9950X 3D because gaming wise about 8% worse than the 9950X 3D productivity anywhere around 15 to 20% gap. So it would have to be in the low 500s for this one to make sense. For me, the biggest question mark, if I were considering a CPU at this level, is the 9950X good enough? Because at $545 US, the current pricing is awfully attractive. The 9950X really will have a marginal few percentage points at best gain for productivity. Uh, and there is that 10 to 11% increment at 1080 gaming though. So is the extra $155 worth it if you're playing at higher resolutions or a title where the X really, really doesn't matter too much? I would tend to stick with the 9950X because it's already really, really good. It's already among the best. And as AMD has rolled out driver improvements, it has since shown gaming improvement and that 150 or so dollars could be spent on a better GPU or you know whatever else you wanna do with it, right? Versus 285K, at least based on the current state of affairs, even if it's not a gaming focused build, I would still have a hard time seeing an argument for it versus a 9950X based on current prices because it's more than a 9950X. And based on what I've seen so far, it's still a very tricky series for Intel from a value perspective. So I would still like to check out the 9900X really and provide some feedback for you uh, if and when that happens. However, I will say that the SKU has been in a really difficult spot because for $100 of savings, you went from having no compromises to now having compromises on both fronts. 12 cores, you're not gonna beat the 9950X. And with essentially a six core chiplet for gaming, even with X3D, you're still behind a 9800X3D. So at this point, you're paying more than a 9950X instead of best of both worlds, you kind of settled for, you know, good of both worlds. And so personally, I think a lot of users would be best just springing for the 9950X3D. So yeah, in conclusion, 9950X3 is the best performing consumer CPU that you can get now. It's truly impressive. And for a high-end build, X3D marks the spot. Hope you found this review helpful. So please give a like, make sure you are subscribed. I will have links down below for the CPU when it launches tomorrow. Big thanks for watching.